Hello everybody, Aistoki here and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play of Buildcraft and Batania. Um, first things first, I came in here off camera, uh, made another one of these lasers, uh, and then I made these are iron chipsets, some red pipe wire, but what I actually made was I made um, a quartz chipset. So I'll show you how to make one of those. And the reason I did that is because a quartz chipset, uh, when thrown into the integration table, actually becomes a clock timer. So if you want to make a basic gate, you can then make a basic gate with an autarkic, 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 uh, pfft, an autarkic is how people say it, so I'm not sure that's right or not, a uh, pulsar or a clock timer or a redstone fader. So I made the one with a clock timer. Um, so that was basically a redstone chipset in there and a piece of redstone, I believe, for the basic gate. No, and a piece of pipe wire. Hence why I made the pipe wire. And a redstone chipset, which I had a couple of, and then the quartz chipset in here. And you get a clock timer. And you put the clock timer... You put the clock timer on a piece of cobblestone structure pipe and what you get with the five second timer turn the redstone signal on is you get nothing then you get a redstone pulse which goes to this dropper and then that dropper puts food in this particular case food into the glomialis now I found that when I was using things stronger than carrots so like baked potatoes or bread uh, the mana spreader was actually filling up on me so this thing on the front of it is a potency upgrade um, so it's a mana lens, so you craft a basic mana lens like this with four mana steel ingots and a pane uh, and then you make it a mana lens of potency by adding a rune of fire and I already have one of those and that I think doubles how much mana is in a mana burst um, I'll just throw some bread in there as an example so you'll hear it click, drops a piece this will absorb it and then that will pulse. Now when you look at it, it's got to less than goes up and then straight away when the pulse fires it sort of dumps it all out. Um, what was happening previously is it wasn't quite dumping it as fast as this was making it um, <clears throat> and it was building up. Uh, you can see I've also added a third level. I always had the hydrangeas um, and I just forgot to use them. Um, I have made, and I'll show the item that I made, um, it is the golden lasso uh, with an eye of ender and a bunch of those. I've got three ender pearls left, so I'm not doing too badly. Um, and I use that to transplant a bunch of animals up here. Um, I lost about four chickens. Somehow they were getting out. I originally thought, where I have a little post like this, you can actually stand on them and then jump over the fence. So I think the first two did that, and the rest of them just seemed to like glitch through a corner and disappear. So, can't glitch out of that, chickens. Um, it's a little chicken pen. Basically, whatever they drop, eggs, feathers, everything, goes in the chest, and I just collect them. Obviously, I can't get chicken meat from them, um, but I'm not really after chicken meat. Uh, this filled up, so I was using... I had a really complicated clock set up and was using that to pulse the redstone mana spreader to here, in the end I just went stuff it, I just put my tablet in and then dropped it in there and filled it up because um, this was starting to actually back up here a little bit now uh, there's a heap of stuff I want to do um, what I will do first is I'll sleep through the night no, before I do that I've um, been enchanting a stack of books uh, you can see I've got power 1, power 2 that's actually two power 1 books combined in the anvil that's why I've got not much left um, wrecking 1, I don't even know what Wrecking goes on. Uh, protection, Protection 2, again if I get a second Protection 2 for a Protection 1, I can make that into Protection 2 then put the two of them together to get a Protection 3 and then enchant some armor with Protection 3 which I think would be awesome. Um, power for a bow, and I've updated that to Power 2. I'm looking for Power 3 and then I'm gonna make myself a bow because that'd be cool. Um, but what I did do is I put one of the sharpness that I got on the sword that already had sharpness 1 and it's now a sharpness 2 in fact if I get, I had efficiency somewhere didn't I? yeah efficiency I can put efficiency 
on my axe. And now it is a man of steel axe efficiency 2. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing with that. Lots of level 1 enchantments that just kind of build up over time. Um, with that, I think it's slightly more efficient um, than it would be to go and kind of manually enchant at high levels and aim for it. Um, again, I can't be completely sure. But what we are making today is the Sojourner's Sash and the Ring of Magnetization. So we want this Ring of Magnetization. So I need four Mana Steel Ignits and a lens of magnetizing. Uh, so I showed you how to make the lens already. So I'll grab a bunch of iron for that. One, two, three, four. Sweet. Glass pane. So this is going to be my mana lens. I then need a piece of gold, piece of iron, and that lens to make it magnetizing. Then I need four more mana steel to make it into an actual ring. And that's not four, by any way that I count it. But the important thing is ring of magnetization. So I open my bauble slot, stick the ring on, and now you chuck something, whoop, and it'll come back to me. That's going to be really handy for building and a whole lot of other stuff that I do, where I, you know, tend to drop blocks down. I'm going to try this out. Oh wow. Cobblestone gives you sand. If you didn't have Buildcraft or something installed that has a grinder in it, that would actually be a really neat feature. Um, so I've got my Ring of Magnetization. Um, the next thing that I want to do... I do want to test out this Man of Steel Axe, but that's going to have to wait. Because that's called getting distracted. Sojourner's Sash. So let's have a grab the book, because this is how we should be doing this. Baubles and accessories. We want the Sojourner's Sash. It's good in the belt slot. If not sleeking, it allows you to walk up one block high gaps without jumping, which is awesome. So I need four leather, an air, an earth, and a man of steel ingot. I have two leather. If I have the earth and the air, um, now this is where um, something else that you can do there is going to come in really handy. Because I hate the idea of killing my cows when I don't have very many. Whoa. I actually feel kind of badass when I have this super sword. You just like run up the creepers and you can two hit them while they're in the air. And they just die. It's pretty brilliant. It's pretty br oh. It's pretty brilliant, I was trying to say. Confusing powder. You can use that to make um, a concussive charge of TNT. So instead of actually blowing up blocks, it just explodes and kills things. Uh, that's pretty cool. And I'm not completely sure. But I think it would be pretty useful as a way of um, powering those flowers. Magnetization. Ha! Cop that egg. What I'm actually looking for is a zombie. Normally there are thousands of them around. Um, no, three skellies in a row, even when you're powered up, is just silly. One skelly though. Why are none of them dropping any rotten flesh for me? I can't believe I'm out hunting zombies. I don't know how many I have to kill. This is ridiculous. This has just got absolutely ridiculous. I don't know the last time 
I killed any zombies and didn't get rotten flesh. And now that I want it, I killed like four in a row. At least I'm getting some experience from this. I'm gonna kill that cow just to make myself feel better. I can hear him, where is he? He gave me flesh, I know it. Excellent. Get in the water. Okay, so that was um, a little less productive than I would have liked. Normally by now I'd have like a fist full of zombie flesh that I can't do anything with. Instead I've got a fist full of creeper powder. But it will achieve the same effect because this is what I was hoping to do. Come over here, throw rotten flesh in, and you get leather. That was my hope upon hope. You and you. And now we should be ready to cook. Cook something good. Just got to remember the slots that all these things go in. Excellent. So now we put it on. Around the belt slot and I now move at double speed. And I still... I'm still not sure if I actually jump higher. Do I? Hey, man on the roof. Yes, I jump high enough ha, to get in and out of my fence. And I run fast enough to, to get back in. Beautiful. But the best thing, this is the whole best part of this whole thing. I can step up over blocks. And I think, I'm pretty sure I just stepped over my fence. Now that I want to do it, I can't. Ah, yeah, so because of that block there, I can step up onto it. Even if I don't mean to, so I'll have to be careful with that. Five eggs, hey? Let's see if we get a chicken. Beautiful. One extra chicken in there. So that's really what I wanted to do for this episode. Now I've got to get used to how fast I run around again. Um, confusing powder. It's all mob drops. What else do I have? Spider eye. Heads. Bunch of cow flesh. Fully charged mana tablet. Ability to jump. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with how this is going. I have actually stopped Enderman. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? That's right. Yes! I love this sword. Once you hit him, he can't teleport away as long as it's powered. And it's currently um, got. What's that? 119,000 RF left. Um, I want to double layer it. But it takes 15 levels, and I only got up to 14 before I went on that crazy book splurge. Uh, but as it is, it's got the same durability as a diamond sword, so it's pretty good in terms of durability anyway, and it's not that expensive to make, uh, except for the empowered crystal thing that I put in it. But I've read somewhere that I can repair it using an anvil, so we'll have to see how that goes a bit later. Yeah, sorry, what I wanted to show you, which is the reason I was going this way, before Enderman distracted me, uh, is I've turned off my tree farm, um, because I just have too much wood. So, my plan, my grand scheme of things, uh, is that I will, in the near future, have an automated charcoal production setup going. Uh, I'm going to use clay insertion pipes. I want to use some buildcraft gates to automate things, um, and a couple other different things as well. But final thing for this episode, I think what I might do is show you my quarry. And I'm showing you this... Well, technically I'm cheating. No, there's no technically about it, I'm just cheating. Um, what I was having issues with, 
um, is that with this large quarry, any time I didn't basically come back constantly and these engines had run out of power, basically any time that happened, I was having the quarry turn itself off and lose its marks. Now, I don't know whether it's meant to do that, whether it's just me that it happens to. Um, so what I did is I added the solar panel and that meant that even when these ran out, that was still putting out 10 RF per tick and that was still keeping it going. And then it ran out for me at night. That's the reason the forestry is not going because I took the solar panel away from it. So what I've done is I've put a creative capacitor bank, which is cheating. Um, I've got it set to an output of one RF per tick, which by itself doesn't really actually do anything. So you can see here um, that these things are going. You can see how slow the quarry is going. Now if I take this off, you can see that it's still getting power. It's still trying to go. But if we actually watch it, it takes 30 or 40 seconds just to break a block. Um, so all this is really doing is being a placeholder until I can come back and put some more power into it. It just means I don't have to keep putting those markers out. So you can see now that I've put, you know, 10 times as much power in, it's still going really slow, um, like wooden pickaxe slow, but at least it's bearable. And then obviously I add my buckets. And we, we up the ante a bit. Gotta get used to this again. This whole jumping higher thing and this whole running faster thing, gotta get used to. I actually think these baubles items would be better if they used mana every time they were active and there was a way to activate them or disable them. I think that would be better for balance. Because at the moment it's a, it's a little bit too much and they never wear out, they never get damaged or anything like that. So I think I think it probably is a bit too much. It is the way that it is. So you can see here it's working a little bit better. And everything is actually, you know, working now. So yeah, that's, it is cheating, um, but it is what it is because the, th the third or fourth time I had to re-put those markers out and they all popped off. Um, and I'm lucky because, you know, it fell a long way down. If it had been, you know, something like over here, um, there was no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. You know how sometimes stuff happens and you see it happening in slow motion and then you walk really slowly and you hate everything about everything at that moment? Yep, that's this moment. So now that I'm mm, naked and afraid, it is time to go try and get all my stuff out of the bottom of that hole. unpleasantness. So, I'm going to get my stuff back, um, and I will see you guys in the next episode. So until then, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be prepared for some buildcraft slash forestry type automation. Until then, a stocky out. Actually guys, what I thought I would do is while I'm down here and I've got all my stuff back, um, is just quickly go about mining some stuff. Uh, that's not going to be particularly useful for the next time I fall in, because uh, since I've taken the bucket away it's stopped covering the whole floor, which would be nice. Um, but yeah, so no more diamonds unfortunately. But there is uh, sulfur, redstone, and that little bit of iron that I got. So yeah, until next time, like I said before, thanks for watching. A stocky out.